Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And happy Memorial Day, everyone. I trust that you all are enjoying um, a holiday, albeit different than past years, maybe. But hopefully you can get some rest, relaxation, and some peace from God this weekend. And remember, we are thanking all of those men and women who have served our country and given their lives for that, for our freedoms. So we thank them and we celebrate them, their dedication, their faith, and their commitment. On this Memorial Day weekend, we also want to remember all the other folks that, we, that serve us, especially in this time of pandemic, such as police, fire, EMS, workers, all of those people. We're thankful for their service. We're thankful that they do what they do for us and their dedication. So bring your Bible and uh, join us today in worship. I want to read these words from, from the Gospels that says, Come, all that are weary, all that are carrying burdens so heavy, Jesus will give us rest. Come take what Jesus has to offer, love, forgiveness, and grace. Christ will give us peace. Come find rest and learn from Jesus, for our Savior will give us rest in our souls. Come let us worship our God. Let us follow our Savior who leads us into life. Let's worship together. By singing, We Are the Church. Good morning. Glad to be here to celebrate this beautiful Sunday with you and happy Memorial Day. I'm going to sing We Are the Church. I'm going to sing one, two, and four. So I hope you'll join me. Maybe I can hear you all the way from here. Being the church, that's what we're talking about today. And more specifically, what can I do while waiting on God? Last week we talked about Jesus coming and being taken up into heaven as his disciples looked on. And Jesus sent them back downhill into Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and all across the world 
to tell the gospel, but he told them to go and wait. And this is right at the beginning of the book of Acts. And Acts starts out by telling us about Jesus showing himself to people for 40 days after his crucifixion. Before his ascension into heaven, Jesus spoke to them and told them to wait in Jerusalem till they were baptized by the Holy Spirit. They asked if he was getting ready to rule as the king of kings in Israel. The disciples were good at asking questions of Jesus when he said things like that. And Jesus told them that it was not their place to know the time and the dates, but to be witnesses to the whole world. Then they watched Jesus being taken up into heaven. That was this week. This week, we're talking about waiting, which they had to do. Do you think the disciples or Mary or the other 120 people in Jerusalem who had seen Jesus wanted to wait? I don't think so. The 11 remaining apostles, Jesus' mother, brothers, and others were waiting in that same upper room where they had shared the Last Supper. The important thing to notice, though, is that they didn't just hang out and wait. They did things. They did something. I want us all to notice the three things that they did together and apart while waiting on God. And for us, the call is to do the same while we wait to see what's going to happen in God's world. So let's read together from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 14 to 20 today. Now the apostles and Mary and Jesus' brother were gathered in the upper room, as I said, starting with verse 14. They all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled, in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas, who served as a guide to those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas brought a, bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, Akeldama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. May God bless our hearing of his word this day. All praise, honor, and glory go to him. Amen. I want to, um, I want to read for you the Old Testament reading, too, that I put in our virtual bulletin this day from Psalm 68. Because these words are important to us. Listen to Psalm 68, just a few verses. Sing to God, you kingdoms of the earth. Sing praise to the Lord, to him who rides across the highest heavens, the ancient heavens, who thunders with mighty voice, Proclaim the power of God whose majesty is over Israel, whose power is in the heavens. You, God, are awesome in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. Praise be to God. Amen. Tomorrow, Monday, is Memorial Day. And I'm thinking that tomorrow will be like no other Memorial Day holiday, right? Not, certainly not exactly like last year. Many people who last year traveled to celebrate or picnic or just relax probably won't be doing those things this year. Some of them will, and I hope so. 
But however, there is one way that tomorrow will be just like any other Memorial Day holiday. We will remember and give thanks for men and women who died serving their country, now and in the past. Today begins a series of messages on being the church, and especially during this time, we need God's people to step up, all of us. Step up and be the church. Well, what does that mean? Well, it might be helpful if we knew what that means and knew how to live that way each day. The book of Acts of the Apostles is the scriptural history and record of the birth and early life of the church, the church of Jesus Christ. These people, including the 11 apostles that we just read about, started the church and grew the church in extremely dangerous conditions, threatening, challenging times. No, they did not experience COVID-19 or a pandemic, but they did experience real fear, real anxiety, real dangers, and real difficult challenges to their daily lives. How many of us have ever been forced to wait, to sit and wait? I have. I'm guessing that everyone out there is saying yes, and I hate to do it. Today I hear the phrase, we are all in this together, a lot. And I do think that it is a way of us joining together for strength in spirit, to encourage each other, strengthen each other. Common experience today. But here's the thing we are all waiting on. We are all waiting to see what will happen tomorrow. What will happen with COVID-19? What will happen with vaccine, cure, treatment, testing, and how it will continue to affect our, our lives. We're all waiting for all of those things and probably many others. Now, I hate waiting. I absolutely do not like waiting. I don't like waiting in line, but unfortunately, waiting is a part of life. Sometimes God makes us wait for a purpose. Sometimes God doesn't always answer our prayers right away. Sometimes he answers with an immediate yes or an immediate no. But I find that more often he answers our prayers with not yet, just wait. While we don't want to run out ahead of God, we also don't want to remain idle and grow more impatient either. So today I want to answer that question. What do I do while I'm waiting on God? So how would you fill in the blank? While waiting on God, I can dot, dot, dot. Well, scripture passage, there are three practical and useful ways to answer that question. What did those disciples do while they waited? What did Jesus' mother do while she waited? What did all of those 120 people who saw the resurrected Jesus, what did they do while they waited? They prayed, they studied God's word, and they acted obediently. Those are the three main things they did. Prayer, the word, and actions. While waiting on God, we can pray, we can study God's word, and we can act on what we know. So let's look a little more closely at those three things, just briefly. Pray. It would have been really easy for the disciples to say, why pray? Why should we pray? Jesus has already promised the Holy Spirit. All we have to do is sit here and wait for him to arrive. The disciples did not say or do that, though. Instead, they prayed. In fact, Scripture tells us they prayed together and often. They already knew the promise that was coming, yet they still prayed. Don't we often forget the importance of prayer in daily life, especially today when we're waiting on God? Sometimes we'll often pray about a subject once and then never bring it up to God again. I'm confident that those who are listening 
or watching today, and probably many others out there, have prayed to get us through this pandemic, prayed for this to end. Have we prayed only once or twice for any of those things? Maybe not. Maybe we have. Maybe you pray every day for that and other things. And that's a great discipline. Have we prayed daily for specific answers to the various challenges forced on people during this pandemic, though? I hope so. I know that God honors our persistent prayer. Secondly, while waiting on God, we can study his word. We have a tool right here in God's word. We can read his voice and hear his voice talking to us during this time. Can you imagine how the apostles felt about Judas Iscariot? I'm sure they were still trying to figure out why the whole thing happened that way around Judas and including his suicide. But here's what Peter did, and we read these words. He began reading from the book of Psalms. He read from Psalms and it, it explained to them what they should do after the, the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot. And it told them they should select another leader as well. They studied God's word. How many of your and my questions and concerns pertaining to this virus today could be answered or are answered in scripture. Do you know? Check it out. See what scripture says. See what God is saying during this time. If we look closely in the Bible for those answers, sometimes we seem to have many more questions than answers in this life. That's the way our world operates sometimes around us. And sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray for an answer and seem to never find it. Many times the answers to our questions are in God's word. So after praying, read God's word for the day. During these challenging days, we have to continue to study scripture individually and together. There are benefits to both ways. Individually, when we study scripture, we might hear God directing us personally. And often, we might feel more comfortable speaking to him alone in our room. Likewise, when we join a group for a Bible study, we might hear through other people what God is saying. The voice of God speaking to our hearts through them. We might also learn a different perspective on what God is saying in a passage of scripture, even one that we've read a thousand times. <clears throat> so lastly, while waiting on God, we can act obediently. That's a hard word for us sometimes. So here are the apostles now back in Jerusalem. Not only are they waiting, but now they are one man short of the group by Judas's betrayal and suicide. They heard in the Psalms that God wanted them to choose a replacement to lead. There are two requirements for the successor of Judas. He had to have had a part in Jesus' earthly ministry, and he had to have been a witness to the ascension and the resurrection. The apostles cast lots. <clears throat> that was a common Old Testament practice. Without going into many details about casting lots, they used that system to determine which one of the two men were to be chosen that they had selected. Matthias was chosen. So the apostles did not waste any time while they waited on God. They acted obedient, obediently to God's word. So I want you to notice that not only did the apostles pray and study while they were waiting, they also continued to take care of business business that needed to be done in the church of Jesus Christ. Today, even though everything that is normal for us has changed very quickly, don't just hang out and wait. You and I are to pray, study, and act. It's time for the church to be the church. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. 
which celebrates the movement of God in some very powerful ways. And for us to be the church during this pandemic, you and I need to watch for God acting and moving in powerful ways because he still is. God is moving and we are too busy feeling sorry for ourselves to notice maybe. Is that the case? I hope not. Next week we will look at what happens when God is moving. While you are waiting on this Memorial Day, can you pray, can you study God's word, and can you act accordingly? Amen. I want to thank you all for continuing to tune in uh, to our live broadcast or even watch our video afterwards. Um, we're trying to make things a little more like church, a little more comfortable for everybody. And we're going to be investigating some other options very, very soon uh, for our worship together. I also want to thank folks for continuing to give to the church, uh, for the ministries of the church, actually. We are still carrying on all of our missions and ministries, um, probably with the exception of me visiting people face to face. If I could do that, I would do that. Instead, I have to call them on the phone or email them or FaceTime with them. So I want to, um, in our bulletin also this week, I put the Apostles' Creed. That's kind of like our family theme, our church family theme. As Christians, it states what we believe. So I want to say these words, and if you remember the Apostles' Creed, please recite these words along with me. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's sing again. to go out and live so God can use you and God can use me. Join me please.
Remember, you go nowhere by accident. Where you go, where you are, where you find yourself, God has placed you there for a purpose. And Jesus Christ living inside of you will strengthen you, prepare you, and walk with you through that purpose. So go with the love of God, the fellowship and strength of the Holy Spirit, and the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, today and every day. Amen. Thank you.